Hello. Today we're going to look at cookies in a practical sense. So this page you're looking at right here is a pretty realistic page, right? Uh, sometimes this will be in the form of like a, a login bar up here in the corner. But basically I enter my username, my password, and I've also got a little checkbox over here. So remember me checkbox. You've most certainly seen stuff like that before. It's always on some kind of a form and it's usually for like a username. Uh, anyways, when you want to remember some information over a long period of time, which outlasts the browser session, uh, then what you're going to want to use is a cookie. So I'm going to show you how you can use a cookie to pre-populate this field with the username. Right? That's the kind of thing that cookies are oftentimes used for. Sometimes they're used for something like a shopping cart. Basically, if you're wondering sh uh, cookies versus sessions, cookies are meant to last a long time, right? like months or weeks, whereas a session is meant to last as long as the browser session. So this is an example of some long-term storage. So let's, uh, let's have a look at the code. So the code looks a little like this. So a lot there's a legitimate login happening in the background, and I cover that in a different video. But on this one, I just want to talk about the form. All right, so here's the username. It's called uname. There's that checkbox. That checkbox is called remember. And then there's a pass. Pass doesn't have anything to do with this. So the things that you need to know is that there's a uname field and this checkbox called remember. Now I'm going to scroll up to the PHP. It's got this big old is set block. Like I said, I wrote this earlier. I wrote this when we were talking about sessions uh, and just creating the, the general login process. So I connect to my database. I sanitize those that data. I salt and hash the password. I, I, I query the table right here. And this little if block right here represents Right, and literally this line right here represents that the login was successful because I got more than zero rows with that username and password. And this uh, line right here represents failure. So let me show you how it plays out currently. If you do a good password, like a good username and password, right, it says success. When I come back, nothing's there. Let me, do, let me get it wrong just to show you how it works. Right, fail. And, but here's this thing, like if you click that checkbox right there, hopefully it'll pre-populate that field. And as you can see, it doesn't, but we want to make it pre-populate that field. So there's a couple judgment calls. One way we could handle this is just every time you check that box, if you type some stuff in here, it's going to remember it and pre-populate that field with it. That's not how I want to do it. I only want to pre-populate that field if your username and password were correct. So that's just my judgment decision. Like I said, this line right here is where that happens, right? That's what a correct username and password looks like. It's just, it's gonna go in there. So if I wanna create the, so this is where I wanna create the cookie. The first thing that we need to do is we need to determine whether that checkbox is checked or not. And if it is checked, then we'll create a cookie. If it's not, then we won't. So that sounds like another if block. So I'll say if, and so I'm gonna just do a, a not empty and I am looking at that field called uh, remember. So dollar sign underscore post remember. So if that thing is not empty, then that means this is where we're going to create the cookie. Now I've showed you how to create cookies in like a, my introduction to cookies video. It's pretty easy. Just call a function called set cookie. The set cookie function, you can pass it a lot of arguments or as few as one. I'm going to pass it three, which is kind of the normal thing to do. So the first thing you pass it is the name of the cookie that you want to create. I'll call it name. The second thing that you pass it is the value that you want to give it. So that's going to be uh, you name, right? That came from right here. And the third thing you're going to pass it is like an expiration date. And so you're going to want to say time. So call the time function, which is like now plus some number of seconds into the future. This is not a, this cookie right here is not going to live for a real long time, but it's going to live for that many seconds beyond the, the date that it was created. So I have a simple little if block. So if that checkbox is checked, then create the cookie. If it's not checked, don't create the cookie. Um, so at this point, I'm going to show you what to do with that cookie. So if the cookie, if we want to create the cookie, we create the cookie, now applying it. So remember, all this does is remember the username. So uh, another way to think about that is it, it has something to do with that line. So it's on this uh, uname field. 
And so if you want to pre-populate a text box, which you may never have done before, then it means you want to give it a value field. So if that checkbox was checked, then we want to pre-populate the value field. Otherwise, we're just going to leave it alone. So what that's going to look like for me is I'm going to, after the name attribute, I'm going to break into a block of PHP, then I'm going to break out of it. And this is going to be a pretty ugly little line, but you can see there's my PHP, so it's, it's inside of this input tag. And so I'm going to do a little if. I'm going to say if is set. And now I'm looking for that cookie, right? So if that cookie is set, then that means that I want to pre-populate the field. So if is set dollar sign underscore cookie. And that cookie I created was called uh, name, right? I, I know that because I looked right there. So if that thing is set, then I want to, and so I'm doing some kind of weird things here syntactically, because I don't like normally doing an if in one line like this, um, but just to try and make this easier to see. So if that thing is set, and I'll echo out, I could probably do a little bit better with this, uh, but I'm gonna do what I'm doing. So I wanna echo out a uh, value field. And so I'll just echo out a value field and the value of that, of the, of the value field, I know it was a tough sentence to say, is gonna be that piece right there, it's gonna be that cookie. Now you're not allowed to echo out an array like that, so you have to wrap that in curly braces, and I think we can all agree that this is a giant mess at this point. I knew that this video would end up kinda of like this, but that's a, it's a legitimate way to do it, so let me just kinda of talk you through that. So, I broke into a little block of PHP, which runs from here to here. Maybe if I put a space there, it'll be easier to see. So my PHP runs from there to there. I have a simple if, with it's just an if with no else even. So if that cookie is set, then uh, echo out this thing where it's gonna say value equals the cookie name. So I talked about it enough. Let's, uh, let's see it in practice. So if I refresh this, nothing really should happen because I have a fail, right? But if I get it correct, and check the box. Now I'm also gonna tell you that this isn't gonna work quite the way you want it to work. If I submit it, nothing happens really. But if I come back to that page, it's repopulated. So notice that it was uh, not populated initially, right? You see how I had to catch, how, how I had to do a refresh? That's one of the problems with cookies, is that there's a little bit of a lag and I'll try and explain that code-wise. There are fixes, for sure. Uh, this just video is already messy enough because this line here, line 44, is pretty hard to look at, I'm sure, so I'm not trying to make this any more difficult. But, but just know that, generally speaking, when you do set a cookie, there's a lag because right, I, I basically what happens is I fill in the form, I submit the information, the information gets processed, I create the cookie, and then I draw the page but this cookie hasn't actually really fully been created yet is the problem and that's why there's a refresh. So one of the fixes for that is just to uh, like automatically refresh the page behind the scenes. The other perfectly reasonable way to fix that is have the action of this form, have it uh, redirect to a different script. So just you just gotta handle that refresh for the user or you can just kind of accept that it's, uh, it's gonna, that there's going to be a little lag on uh, pre-populating that field. You can see it lives, right? It persists. Even if I log out, that field persists because it's a cookie and it's not a session. So that's uh, one way that you can use uh, cookies. It's a very common use of cookies. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do a perfect job with it in the con time constraints of this video, but uh, I think we did a pretty decent job with it. I'll just kind of show you my code again so you get a look at what I wrote down here. Literally all I wrote was the, those three lines and uh, that one line. That's all I did to integrate cookies into this site. Hopefully that helps you to understand how you can use cookies to improve the usability of your site. Thanks for watching.